What's up, Banana Bunch? Mark here with another episode of the Jungle Gyms Podcast. And you know what? It's a big B for this week because it's my Thanksgiving prep special. I've got Kelly from the Bombonnery Bakery in to talk about fall treats and more. I've got a guy named Jake from Dust Village coming in to talk about what it's like to fry over 60 turkeys on Thanksgiving morning because I've never fried a turkey before. I'm going to walk you through some Thanksgiving facts and the food lineup from the OG Thanksgiving so that you can come visit me here in the jungle and pick up some of those fresh ingredients, including some brand new product from the brewers here at Wild Ohio. Oh, and, and not just Wild Brewers. Something I thought I'd mention before I get to my spiel about the reviews is that, you know, we can take care of you on Thanksgiving. So until November 19th, which will be two days officially after the official release of this episode, that'll be the cutoff. If you want to order a turkey and sides from us here, that's right. Our very own head chef is going to prepare you a Thanksgiving meal through our chef creations program. So if you get on junglegyms.com, you'll see we got a little tab in there for chef creations. You should check it out. Turkey, sides, all kinds of delicious stuff. And this guy's got quite a pedigree. He used to cook for the Beastie Boys. And I would assume those guys know something about food because they're from New York. And that seems like a place where you have a lot of options to eat from. So make sure you check that out. Get those orders in before the 19th. Let's clear them out. I want to see a billion of those orders come in. I actually really don't. I don't know what a billion orders looks like. It probably would be a nightmare. I can't even fathom that large of a number. But you know the drill before we start. This is the part where I ask you for a review. That's right. America does not run on Duncan. It turns out that it runs on Apple Podcast Reviews. You see, Apple is the biggest podcast platform in the world, at least currently. And thus, in order for our show to be more successful, we need you to tell the world why you love listening. Of course, telling your friends helps too, as both downloads and reviews are pretty even keeled here. But the point is, every time that you post a review about the show or tell your friends to listen, you cement us as one of the top podcasts in the world. We've been consistently sitting in the top 100 food podcasts globally, which is insane to me, but it is so, so cool. So thank you all to all of you who listen to this segment and write a review. Thanks to everyone who's already written a review. Thanks to people who heard me weirdly say written a review there and was like, um, maybe I won't review that part. But I think that all of this is just so important. Oh God, hold on. Somebody's busting into the studio right now. What was your, I didn't even get your name this time. I was too excited. My name is David Fultz. Hi, David. Thank you so much for coming in. Hey, thank, hey, thank you. You got me excited instantly because, you know, I have a, a bit of a film background myself. And then you were <laughs> like, oh, stunt performer and a uh, union actor. So welcome yeah. another one of us. Absolutely. Yes. One of us. One. <laughs> and we have to eat too. And That's why right. Go to Jungle Gems. Well, you sounded so excited. So I was like, what brings you in today? What are you here for? I'm going to tell you why I'm here is uh, they had the best peppers. Oh, my God. I took a picture of their peppers and it was just, it's just beautiful. Uh, they have these uh, Fresno peppers. I'd never heard of them before. Mm -hmm. And I make this salsa. Uh, it's uh, I, And I leave all the tomatoes out. It's just jalapeno salsa. Four ingredients. Jalapeno, cilantro, red onion, and vinegar. And that's it. And I was over here one time, and I, and I was uh, introduced to the wide world of Fresno peppers. Mm. They look just like a jalapeno, red and shiny, but they're a little more pointier on the end, and they're okay. a little hotter. And I bought some, brought some of them. They're beautiful. They just, they work perfectly with the uh, jalapenos. So now I might do a 50, 50 blend. I might get half jalapeno, half Fresno with the red onion and the vinegar. And I'm going to buy all of it right here. That they just, amazing. it's just, they, they have the best looking peppers and there are tons of them. So it's just a great selection. How can you say no, right? I, yeah, I can't. <laughs> That's yeah, why right. I'm here. <laughs> Plus, and then you get here, you have to look at everything else. It's more sure. than just food. I mean, they got, they got the produce, but then they have gifts. They have cookware. They have uh, uh, cutlery. They have toys. They have all kinds of stuff. They and, got a uh, podcast I'm, studio right in the entrance. And I did not know they had a podcast <laughs> studio. I'm walking through here and I'm like, that looks like a media room. What, what, what's up with that, honey? <laughs> Honey, it says something. You, if you're in there, you'll be recorded. You know that, don't you? And I'm like, wait, hey, can I be, can I be on a podcast if they have it? She goes, sure. <laughs> so, well, I'm glad yeah. I can make that come true today. Hey. And uh, my new movie is The Big Ugly. You can find Ooh. it anywhere. Rent it anywhere. Uh, the story is set in West Virginia, but it's filmed in my hometown of Moorhead, Kentucky. Oh, no kidding. Stars uh, Ron Perlman, uh, uh, Roddy McDowell. And my scene is with Vinnie Jones. Oh. And my name's David Fultz. Look me up on the IMDb. And everybody, please visit your Jungle Gyms. It's an experience. It's a Cincinnati uh, 
uh, it's, it's just one of these uh, staples when people say, hey, you're living in Cincinnati. And I say, yeah, if you visit, there's a store called Jungle Gems. I'll tell you, well, I, I don't want to say grocery store, but it's like a grocery store, but it's <laughs> much more. It's almost like you're entering a theme park when you come driving yeah. a parking lot. It's the and world's largest gift shop almost, oh, right? <laughs> yes. There's, no, you're just, you're, there's nothing they don't have. But, I mean, their produce is wonderful. I'm here tonight. I, just, I'm just, I needed peppers. I said, honey, let's go to Jungle Gyms. They've got the Fresno peppers. they got tons of delicious, huge, shiny jalapenos. I love it. And thank you so much for coming in, David. I'm super excited. It's funny because I think I knew some people that worked on that movie with you as well. So I won't call them out on air in case I'm wrong. <laughs> but uh, I, but no, once you said Vinnie Jones too, I was like, oh, wait, I actually think, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> well, definitely, we'll definitely all check that out. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll watch it in the studio one of these days. Yes. Well, and, it may, and my catch to that would be like, yeah, let's do that. But um, you're going to have to bring a little of your salsa with you. I might have to. Awesome. If, if, I'm, if I'm in here again, I will bring salsa and just whatever, your chips. That, that's, I'm, I'm serious. I will make that happen. Okay. Okay. Well, Good thanks deal. for your time today, David. I really appreciate hey, it. Thank you. Have fun. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess we know what's on David's menu for the jungle this week, but what's on my menu for the jungle? Here's the lineup. Okay. And you know what? You can always skip around in the show if you want, as I do leave time codes for the show in the show notes. So you can pick your favorite segment or what have you there. But you know what? Come on. This is all about parasocial relationships. We're pretending to be friends with each other right now, right? And, and why would you want to skip any of it? But here we go. This is what we're doing. So up first, I'm going to hit you with some Thanksgiving trivia and facts leading into my rundown of the OG Thanksgiving meal featuring ingredients you can mostly acquire here. But you know what? I don't want to spoil it yet. This rolls into a quick Jungle Gyms regional exclusive treat from True Fru and a brand new alcoholic brew perfect for Thanksgiving from Wild Ohio that releases in our stores today. That's November 17th for anyone not listening on release day. And then I'm gonna close it all out with Kelly from the Bon Bonnery helping me get fatter with their delicious holiday treats. That's enough pre-rambling from me. Let's get into my main rambling instead. So I was trying to think of a fun way to do a Thanksgiving episode in general, right? You know, and I thought what would be cool here, in addition to things like our chef creations and all that fun stuff that we do with our in-house chefs, which is crazy, right? The fact that we have that, it's actually, I think, really cool. But I thought it would be interesting if maybe, maybe we went through and I did a little history lesson for you so that maybe you could come on into the jungle and prepare yourself a Thanksgiving meal that was almost identical to the original Thanksgiving back in 1621, right? Like, we're all hip to retro stuff. Nostalgia's in. Well, I'm going to put about 400 years of nostalgia. Oh, my gosh, while I said that out loud, is this year really the 400th anniversary (laughs) of Thanksgiving? That is hilarious. Okay, well, I want to help because, you know, like I said, you can get most of these ingredients here in the store, and I'm not going to give you, like, full recipes or anything like that. It's more of a history lesson, like I said. But I think you can probably easily Google those if you really want to get wild or sift through some of the recipes and things that we've got on our site here at junglegyms.com. But, you know, I'll probably give some tips and things as we go. So so as I mentioned, the first Thanksgiving was celebrated in 1621. But if you really want to go full on authentic Thanksgiving like it was back then, not only will you serve the things I'm about to talk about, but you're going to do it over a three day harvest festival. I think I'm in for that. I got plenty of sweatpants. Okay, here's a couple fun facts. First off, butterball turkeys, right? They're like one of the biggest turkey purveyors in the U.S. They answer more than 100,000 turkey cooking questions via their uh, butterball turkey hotline every November and December. That is crazy. How many questions do you all have about turkey cooking? Like, they usually put the instructions on there, and then, you know, Google exists. Now, I definitely understand this 20 years ago, but now, come on, everyone. We've got the internet. I've got a little TV screen in my kitchen that screams recipes at me. I know it's doable. I thought this was interesting. The average number of calories consumed on Thanksgiving is 4,500. That's right, 4,500 calories. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, I'm pretty sure the recommended calories in a day are is something like 2,000. So, you know, we're going for a little over two times that. Setting records. We do it big here in the States. <laughs> Oh, apparently there are four towns in the U.S. named Turkey. Uh, They're in Arizona, Texas, Louisiana, and North Carolina. So if you're listening in those areas, you can literally go to Turkey Town 
Uh, and if you do that, because I just told you about it, just send me pictures. And if there's like a sign or something, I would love that. Honestly, I'd almost say if you find any fun souvenirs, send that my way too. Uh, and I'll figure out a way to compensate you for that. <laughs> Okay, my fun final factoid here we'll throw out, and then we'll move on to the actual fun content, the historical content. Uh, Abraham Lincoln proclaimed Thanksgiving a national holiday on October 3rd of 1863. And this is all because a woman by the name of Sarah Josepha Hale, who you probably don't recognize the name of, but she's responsible for writing 1863's number one banger of the year, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Uh, she actually had convinced Lincoln to make Thanksgiving a national holiday after writing him letters for 17 years. 17 years. That's wild. That's how much she loved the holiday. Interesting. Let's dive in, right? Okay, so the tough part about all of this, more than anything, is that no one really made menus back in the 1600s. Uh, so don't really have a lot of like official confirmed information, right? It's like historical or rather uh, conjecture from historians, right? Which I love. And I'm sure that a lot of this is accurate because, the, you know, they spent their lives <laughs> learning about that kind of stuff. But we don't really have anything official, right? Like not even place cards. And that was really upsetting to me because I really just wanted to know where everyone sat around the cornucopia that year. So first off. I'd argue this is like the the main player of the feast, right? The turkey? The turkey overall, not a guarantee, okay? So wild turkeys were abundant in the region, but it's just as likely that people were eating things like ducks, geese, swans. And, uh, you know, while we don't carry them, or honestly, I don't think anybody eats swans anymore, I, I hope. Uh, if you're feeling like going full-on classic Thanksgiving, come on in. Check out our uh, non-traditional protein section, as it were. Get some duck, get some goose, uh, and, you know, get it and start prepping it yourself. That's going to be fun. Now, stuffing tends to go hand-in-hand hand with the bird, uh, and that wasn't really a thing yet either, at least not the bread-based stuffing that you're thinking of today. So chances are the, the settlers were just, they were adding flavors from things like nuts, herbs, onions, that kind of stuff. That said... Everyone definitely ate pretty good here. Uh, in addition to the fowl I mentioned, the indigenous people uh, arrived as guests to this event with a bunch of deer. So culinary historians allegedly speculate that the deer was roasted on a spit over a smolding fire, as apparently culinary historians spend their time lovingly dreaming about the way people cooked meat. I just thought when I was reading the description, I thought that was really funny. I was like, wow, you put a lot of effort into describing how they prepped the deer. Weird. I mean, if, it makes sense, you know, but it was just it, roasted on a spit over a smoldering fire. It feels like something you'd read in like a fancy place menu right now where you're like, come on now, I know that's not the case. I think we can all safely assume that veggies and fruits probably played a pretty big role at the feast. Again, I know I keep saying this, but this is all conjecture because no one posted anything to Facebook about what they ate at the original Thanksgiving. Thanks for nothing. Uh, but local veggies that were likely at the game here were probably things like onions, beans, lettuce, spinach, carrots, cabbage. Did I say carrots? Yes, I, I misread my list. But maybe even peas. So these are all things that you can easily come acquire from us here in the jungle. And guess what? Just like back then, so much of our produce is also locally grown and sourced. So that's pretty awesome. One thing that uh, they really did seem to document, at least at this time frame of existence, was corn uh, definitely being there. But you have to keep in mind that back then they didn't eat corn the same way that we did now, right? Or that we do now, rather. Like no one was taking a cob of corn and buttering it up and or eating just kernels out of a bowl, that kind of thing. They would just take that corn, rip it off the cob, turn it into a form of like cornmeal mush, and then they'd boil it and it'd be pounded into some thick corn mush slash porridge that maybe got sweetened with molasses. And honestly, reading about this, I kind of want to try that. I mean, I, I like corn. It's fine. It's already our, um, you know on the sweet end of things. But this sounds like one of those lost treats that we should give a shot to. Like, and, and now that I'm saying that out loud, I am sure there's a YouTuber out there that's like, all right, making a cornmeal mush, boiled 
stuff with molasses. That's like their whole channel. It's all 1600s corn recipes. Now, on the fruit end, since I mentioned those as well, you're probably looking at things like regional delights, like uh, blueberries, plums, grapes, raspberries, gooseberries, which I definitely had to look up, uh, and cranberries. Now, I would say that we're thinking that pilgrims might have been familiar with cranberries by this time, especially because the indigenous people were using cranberries not just as a food, but as a natural dye, which I thought that was fun. Uh, but history says that they probably weren't turning them into like relishes or sauces by then. And the reason that uh, historians feel that way is because the, so the, the pilgrims brought these fat sacks of sugar on the Mayflower across the sea, right? But by the time that they, you know, by the time of Thanksgiving in November of 1621, those stores were long gone or at the very least very close to gone. So they weren't going to like, oh, why don't we try this new recipe? Uh, not to mention, um, in my opinion, more importantly, that cooks actually weren't even boiling cranberries with sugar and using it as like a meat sauce condiment thing until about 50 or so years later. That's kind of a bummer, in my opinion. You know, I may be a foodie, but I like that arguably bad processed cranberry jelly. And, you know, it didn't show up at their meal. So you got to just eat whole cranberries by the fistful. OK, I can't explain why I like the uh, cranberry jelly but I am sorry. Now, here's a part we don't actually talk about often with regards to the original Thanksgiving, and we definitely don't really do much with it these days, but think about where they landed. New England, right? The original Thanksgiving probably had a really good focus on fish and or shell shellfish. You know, when I wrote that, I knew I was going to say shellfish weird. Like I was going to say selfish instead. So I'm not editing it. I'm, I'm mad at myself and you have to be a part of this. Historians think that a lot of the meal was seafood heavy, right? It makes sense. Again, New England. Mussels are all over New England and were probably super easy to get because they like cling to rocks and they'd be along the shoreline there. But the part that kind of turned my nose up a little bit, and maybe I'm wrong and, you know, this is me just not being adventurous enough in this regard, but was finding out that colonists were occasionally serving the mussels with curds, like cheese curds. And since I'm mentioning cheese curds, this is a great opportunity for you to pause this episode of the podcast, go back an episode or two, I think it's two episodes back, actually, uh, and hear from our very own cheese expert and former cheesemaker, Summer, talk about cheese curds. It's the episode with the big cheese. It's a good one. I think you'll enjoy it. Anyway, I wasn't really expecting this combination to be a thing, right? Like, imagine eating mussels and then eating it with something akin to cottage cheese, Two things that I like, but I don't think I like together. But if that's the case, next up, I'll be blending Oreos into my mayonnaise. Anyway, lobsters, bass, clams, oysters, they all got invites to the party. So, another great opportunity for you to go visit Ross and company over in our seafood department here and pick most, if not all of those up. I kind of wish they said that crabs were a part of this because, personally, I'd be uh, all over having some crab at Thanksgiving. That sounds really delicious. And I feel like crabs would have been up in that area, too. But what do I know? You know who will know? Our seafood department. They know everything. Wait till you hear from Ross on a future episode. I talked to that guy for like 10 minutes just to set up an interview, and it was the most information I think I've ever received in my life in a short span of time, and it was fascinating. All right, moving on. Now, I got to move on to the negatives of this party, right? Because so far, I think the menu sounded pretty good. Some uh, seafood, you got some wild game, you've got all kinds of fresh fruits and vegetables and all that good stuff. But uh, this one, this section disappointed me, and it's going to disappoint any of you with similarly awesome tastes that are looking to create this meal, right? Potatoes, especially mashed ones, were absolutely not on hand for this Thanksgiving. I'm going to go ahead and lower the Thanksgiving flag to half-mast over this. Okay, so just to give you all a little you know, info here. Potatoes are originally native to South America, and around the 1570s or so, the Spanish started introducing them to Europeans. However, they hadn't really gotten popular enough to be on BuzzFeed's 1621 article of must-have items for the season, and thus did not make their way onto the Mayflower. So go ahead and pour out uh, a little gravy for my favorite part of Thanksgiving, the mashed potato. Do you want more bad news? No? Too bad. Pumpkin pie? Also out of the question. We're just taking 
two L's for this show now. Sure, both indigenous peoples and the pilgrims ate things like pumpkins and squashes native to the area, but, you know, things like butter and wheat flour weren't exactly available at that time to make things like pie crust. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't exist at all, but it was like, you know, dire straits. You remember the Thanksgiving story. Maybe more importantly to all of this, um, they hadn't constructed an oven for baking, so it was definitely hard to do that in the way that we would view a pie, right? However, some historians believe that early English settlers in America would take a pumpkin, hollow it out, fill that pumpkin carcass with things like milk, honey, and spices, and then it would kind of turn it into some sort of like rudimentary custard, and then would toss the whole thing in hot ashes to finish it. That said, I don't know. That doesn't necessarily sound like the truth to me. That just sounds like more crazy thought experiments <laughs> from a culinary historian. It was like, you know, what would be really good if you did is you took a pie or you took a pumpkin and you hollowed it out and you mixed it with all these things that we don't think that they had in previous paragraphs, but in this paragraph, because I like pumpkin pie, we're going to write it into the story. It's retconning history. I'm not here for it. So I thought that was really interesting. But ultimately, I think it's kind of cool that we could get literally this whole you know, this whole meal done in this store. I mean, obviously, right, we sell food, so it's not that crazy. But I like the idea that you could take this and go full retro, throw it back, and uh, go old school with it. It's the 400th anniversary of Thanksgiving. What a better time. You won't see an anniversary like this for another 100 years on a full moon. <laughs> if any of you do this and go and make a Thanksgiving based on the original meal here as I've lined out for you, please do me a few favors. Take some pictures and email them to me because I just want to see what it looks like, you know, if you went any non-traditional way. Like if somebody's like, oh, I made a bunch of quail instead and oysters. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but send me some pictures. Email me at podcast at junglegyms.com or call me on the uh, Jungle Gyms podcast hotline at 513-674-6855. That's country code one if you're calling from outside the States. And if you're calling from outside the States... Why are you celebrating Thanksgiving? I'd like to know that too. But yeah, get engaged with me. I want to see that stuff. I'm curious. You know, I know it won't necessarily look too traditionally different, but I'd be curious. I'm really curious if somebody makes that cornmeal mush, molasses mush, sweet thing. I don't know. T now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, they like mashed corn and molasses. I was like, oh, were they just making a weird booze too? I know nothing, everyone. I'm just, I'm learning as we go, okay? I'm not the expert yet. I will be the expert over time. So while I was recording this, I got visited by my friend Chris, who also works in the store. Uh, I mentioned him last week, too, for hooking me up. And he hears me talking about raspberries being one of the fruits that were at the first uh, Thanksgiving. So I thought this would be a quick chance for me to shout out a product that is... In at least regionally exclusive to Jungle Gyms right now, it's called True Fru, Nature's Raspberries. But True Fru is the brand name. And what they are, they are ripe picked raspberries that are frozen fresh, which captures their natural ripeness. I'm reading it off the bag. Then they are immersed in a small layer of white chocolate and then dark chocolate and frozen. And it is one of the most incredible treats I've ever had. I said to Chris, I was like, isn't it funny how when you take a fruit and freeze it, it suddenly becomes a treat where if you're anything like me or maybe most Americans, you don't really view fruit as a treat. Sometimes even I would say I want a necessary evil is not true for me. But, you know, when I know when I think about like what some of my friends eat, I'm like, oh, not a lot of fruit happening, huh? Um, but just to describe this, they are just like little densely packed flavor bombs. I mean, I mean, you've had a raspberry probably before. You've probably had chocolate before. But there's something magical when those two flavors get combined. And it's got good crunch here. I'll eat one on air just to be safe. So you can hear that crunch. It's delicious. It's really rich dark chocolate. They come in some other varieties too, but I'm trying the dark chocolate with white in the inside. It's wonderful. They apparently have a cherry variant. I believe the packaging just got updated recently now, and they come in like little um, like ice cream pint cups. So I would highly check that. I highly recommend checking that out. Sure, it's a bit of a half measure in regards to some of the treats I mentioned in our uh, 
traditional Thanksgiving feast. But you know what? If you're going to allow yourself a little cheat in the menu, I feel like this is a move, right? Sure, maybe chocolate or freezers were not available in 1621. But they are available in 2021, the 400th anniversary of Thanksgiving. So you got to check these out. True Fru, that's T-R-U-F-R-U. Uh, they've got the little umlauts over the U, so you know that you're supposed to pronounce it with that ooh noise. Chris, thanks for bringing these by, dude. That's good. That's really good. I, I You know, I, I'm literally sitting here. One of my favorite frozen treats ever has been when they, you know, I think Dole or one of those brands, they sell... Uh, little frozen banana pieces with chocolate on them and they're delicious maybe frozen strawberries the same way but how did it take us until now to go you know it'd be another fruit that would be delicious to freeze raspberries especially dipped in chocolate oh my gosh amazing all right moving on well everyone you can hear me opening a can right now because i was looking for a little cranberry i did not get in the original thanksgiving so i've got steve here representing uh, wild ohio brewing how you doing today steve i'm doing great thank you for having us i'm about to be doing great nothing i like more than drinking at 10 in the morning <laughs> <laughs> well that's the good thing about this you can drink this in the morning it's nice and smooth so yes. you know i looked up a little bit you all, you all are based out of columbus ohio so we're yes. brewing it with tea in the beer which i think is all kinds of awesome. Well, the great thing about this is it is literally tea. There is no beer aspect to oh. it other than the brewing process itself. Interesting. We brew it like a beer, but we use green tea, black tea, and fruit juice. That's our ingredients, and that's what it comes down to. That's so cool. So tell me a little bit about Wild Ohio overall that I you know, I know I didn't get. Well, about we've been in section. business for four years now. Mm -hmm. um, we are literally everywhere in Ohio. Uh, Four, four years ago, and then we, two years ago, we moved into Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, and then this year, with COVID, we just now started to expand into Boston, Rhode Island, uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Texas. Wow. So, more in the Midwest, but we're waiting for Florida and uh, California are the two that are coming next. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you're spreading your wings, right? You got a little yes. Midwest wing. You got a little New England wing. I'm here for it. Boston is going to love this. Yes. Okay, so the big thing, you know, I made the cranberry joke at the top is that you've got a seasonal cranberry flavor. And if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be in our stores the day that the show got released. Correct. It'll be next Wednesday is awesome. when it'll be hitting the shelves. Sounds here. good. So, as of the 17th, everyone, which again, that's the day we're releasing this, you can come get this. I'm going to take a sip on air if you're okay with that. Oh, yeah. I, so it's funny. I uh, I tried some of these before when uh, it was that brouhaha down at Sawyer Point here in Cincinnati. Correct. I remember they'd had some of those, and I was very taken. So when uh, Jason, uh, who's in the room but silently watching us. Hello. <laughs> uh, came in and told me about this. I was like, oh, I got to try it. So. Oh, it's tea and cranberry. It's that easy, that simple. That is real dangerous and what's the abv on this one that one's five you can't taste that at all that's no, it's, amazing it's cranberry juice is what yeah. you taste it reminds me a lot of a friend who i know listens to the show and i and james if you're listening right now this is a shout out to you it reminds me a little bit of uh uh, forget who it is. I think it's Canada Dry makes a can, uh, cranberry ginger ale. It's kind of got that vibe. It's almost right. like cranberry soda in a can. Correct. Oh, but then at the end of it, I'll feel a little bit better yes. about existence. Correct. <laughs> and we have other flavors, as you see here on the table. Yeah. So tell me about the rest of the product line. Well, we've got a, a blueberry that's six and a half. We've got a mango that's eight, a mm. peach that's eight. And then our big boys, our black cherry bourbon, that's 9%. And several of those, you're feeling just fine. Yeah, right. So is the uh, the bourbon barrel one, is it like aged in a bourbon barrel? No, or because just a flavor? everything, all of ours are gluten-free, 100% oh. gluten-free. So if it was actually aged, then we couldn't call it gluten-free. Makes sense. So it's bourbon flavoring, but it's, I think the bourbon, the word bourbon is what people attract to the can. Yeah. And it is our number one seller by far. I think most people are more concerned with the little hint of bourbon flavor than right. they are with the yeah process. the actual right right maybe the beer like the beer purists but yes. who's friends with them right, right. <laughs> <laughs> four years ago when we first came out the first place we went to was Jungle Jim's Eastgate yeah and we brought in twenty five cases the very first time all twenty five cases were gone in four hours that's awesome and the buyer looked at me and says. Another 50 for Monday. <laughs> it was that quick, that easy, and people tried it. And it was the Saturday before Thanksgiving, and people were coming up and literally picking up cases 
of the black cherry bourbon at the, you know, two cases at a time. Yeah. And I, and they go, can we get more? And I said, well, there'll be more here on Monday right yeah. now. This is all we got, but you can come back Monday. They'll have plenty. Well, it's so easy drinking. I mean, it, yeah. it really, it just goes down incredibly smooth. You know, you made a comment uh, before we started about how it wasn't quite what you expected. It's like, but you know what? It wasn't what I expected. It's what I wanted. If that right. makes sense. Do you oh, know what I mean? Great. Yeah. I think that's like the best way because coming in, I was like, I hope that's what it tastes like. And it tastes what my dreams were rather than what I was expecting. So uh, a question I have on this is, why tea? Like, what was the, do you know what the impetus was there to well, start with tea? how it actually started, the company actually was a kombucha company. And as the owner was trying to get distribution, kombucha's got to be kept cold because of the SCOBY yeast that okay. keeps growing. And it's got to be kept cold so it doesn't keep growing. Well, he got tired of being turned down in certain locations because Nobody's going to give you cold space right from the jump street. You've right. got to earn that spot. So he said, all right, I got to come up with something like this that is shelf stable that I can put on the warm shelf and it can sit for people to purchase. So he did some tinkering and Wild Ohio came to be. And it is literally just like a kombucha, but it's a beer. Yeah, there's like a very, and I, I, I hesitate to call it a funk, but it, now that you're mentioning the kombucha, I can taste just like ever so slightly that bit of like the, yes. I don't know what I would describe that flavor as, but it's, this is like, well, I like, know you're sitting in the room and I always hate doing that thing where I'm like, this is amazing, but yeah. it legitimately, I think this is the best one of your flavors I've ever tried. Yes. It's so smooth. Audience, if you are thinking at all that you want a cranberry beverage this holiday season, go buy it. Like... I'm literally thinking about pausing this and going and grabbing another six pack right now. I'm embarrassing myself. So uh, that's all right. That's good. We love that enthusiasm behind yeah. the brand. I mean, how could I not be? This is so silly, delicious. Yeah, this is amazing. Made without barley or malt. What a cool process. You know, it's been interesting to see this sort of like the wave of the fruited kind of beer right. products come out in the last few years. And it's really nice to know that we've got such a strong presence in Ohio. Well, and the segment is just literally, you know, they thought it was going to be just something here for a couple of years and go away. It's actually getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. And it's an over a billion dollar business right now. It's crazy. And everybody's get, trying to get a piece of that pie. Yeah. Well, you know, you've seen a lot of like the smoothie style sours happening too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, everything now is like a, a fruit beverage. I'm right. here for it. I want, right. look, I, you know, and I know my beer friends will kind of turn their nose up at what I'm about to say, but I realistically, I just want things in life that taste awesome. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not here about like, oh, it's this this process necessarily. You know, I just, this tastes good. Yeah. This tastes exactly like what I want out of booze. I was like, I can't taste any of the alcohol. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. It goes down super smooth. It's got a great, strong flavor. That is, again, I hate to keep saying it, Steve, but I really, really like that. That's good. I appreciate that. Do you have a uh, favorite flavor in the lineup? Actually, mango's my favorite, but we've got one that's a dark berry mm. that it's a little lighter on. That's yeah. they, both of ours. We hit that one a lot, and but they're all good. The only one, black cherry bourbon is the one I'll save for the nightcap. <laughs> After you've had a few during the day and you want to go to sleep, drink one of those. You're good. That's good. Jason, what'd you say your favorite was? I would say the dark berry. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah. I pour it on ice. Ooh. Yeah. Because yeah. it's iced oh, yeah. tea. I mean, right. yeah. don't get twisted. Go wild. Oh, <laughs> look at that. I don't even think I can close better than that. I almost <laughs> want to just cut it off now. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so you obviously mentioned your experience. Any other fun things on the horizon that we should make the audience aware of? Yeah, in the we've got a uh, black raspberry. 9% on that one as well. <laughs> and then we got a strawberry pineapple, which is my, I've been yelling for that one for a couple of years. And so that one's coming very soon. That sounds really, really good. And the great thing is with all these six packs that they're line priced at eight ninety nine. you know, because this is a five and the black cherry bourbon's a nine. It's all line price. So yeah, they're great. all eight ninety nine, dollars And then great. we've got two mixed 12s yeah. at fifteen ninety nine. That's perfect. And on the shelf here, you can find it in the gluten-free section. Oh, no kidding. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's great to know. It, so. And with celiacs and all that and people that are just looking to get healthy. Yeah. Not that alcohol's healthy, but 
this is close as it gets. Exactly right. It's like it's like at least uh, half measures, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like I still want to have fun, Steve, but I'd also like to look out for myself. That's so cool. I really appreciate you coming in today, and it, you know what? You should come back again when we get the new flavors in. Definitely. And you and I, I so I was eyeballing that mango too. I have a feeling that's going to be on my favorite. Well, those list. are for you to sample at your leisure. I really appreciate it. Well, it sounds like it's a day of leisure for me. Yeah. <laughs> be an interesting podcast next or on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I make it through. Yeah. Well, Jason, obviously, thank you so much for connecting me. I, you know, everybody that's listening right now, I mentioned Jason last week on the show, too, because he was the one that got me connected with Liquid Death, uh, which that was awesome, too. And so now I'm getting me connected with Wild Ohio. So I have a feeling you're one of my new favorite friends of the podcast. <laughs> so a huge shout out for Jason. And again, Steve, thank you so much for coming out here today. I appreciate if I can it. ever do anything for you. Doing this is perfect. Yeah. All we just With our product, it's literally word of mouth. We're small, but the more people that know, it spreads, and the liquid is what sells it. I mean, it's a great process, but the liquid has got to be good, and our liquid's good. No joke, that cranberry drink was stupid delicious. I'm actually almost mad at how much I enjoyed it. I may have uh, busted into the mango while I was editing, and I think I already found my drink of spring and summer 2022. Sorry to let you know, seltzer people. Before we get to our final interview, I ran into our next guest as he was doing some shopping here in Jungle Gyms. Jake is the owner of Dust Village Design Co. and told me a story about frying turkeys, and I thought, you know what, that's totally going to fit in this week's episode. So, here's Jake. Hi, Jake. Welcome to the show. Mark, it's it's, it's wonderful to see you, sir. Yes, absolutely. I uh, Well, this is fun. I always like grabbing randoms in the store, yeah. so this worked out pretty good. So uh, before we get into frying turkey madness, I saw you shopping here at the store. So tell me a little bit about what you do for design work. Tell me, tell me about Dust Village. Yeah, so Dust Village is a creative collective of um, designers, producers, uh, editors, and we basically do all the work that a big agency would do, but for small businesses in the greater Cincinnati area. So um, I'm really involved in my community. I really like to help out the little guy and make a big impact in, in the place I live. And I really enjoy doing that. And and uh, Jungle Gems is important in my process. And, and yeah, and what is you about that. What's your process? So when I'm, you know, designing for a new company, creating this new company, I sort of find companies that I think this company would buy. Mm -hmm. So the best place to come and do that the best place to see so many logos at one spot is Jungle Gyms. They have the biggest variety. It's so cool to walk through the aisles and find something cool. And and nine times out of ten, if I need something and I don't know exactly which product I want to go with, I'm going to go with the best designed one. Yeah. So it's like sort of a sort of like a, a great spot to find a million different and and stuff you never knew you were looking for. A million different products. It's oh, stuff yeah. you, you didn't even know you were looking for. Well, and like a visual inspiration too. I mean, as I'm, I know you mentioned off air, but like just the design of the studio, the look of the store too. I'm, I have to imagine oh, yeah. that's inspiring. I too, mean, I, I mean, if you look up, it's like a, it's like a better than shenanigans, man. It's a, uh, they got, <laughs> they got gorillas on the ceiling and um, they got a uh, giraffes out in the parking lot and you can't even. You can't walk 10 feet without seeing something <laughs> crazy. I'm hoping that I can do most of my spring episodes from the little water display outside, the little water feature out there. With That'd the be animals. pretty cool. Yeah, we'll go in remote, <laughs> hanging out of the beach. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I, I, must, I know you'd mentioned this also off air, but you've done a lot of work for restaurant tours in the area, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I help out uh, a couple different companies downtown. Um, Boomtown is uh, one of big client of mine. That's Boomtown Biscuits and Whiskey? Yeah, Boomtown oh. Biscuits and Whiskey, uh, Christian, Christian Gill, Gill yeah. guest of the show. Yeah, nice. yeah, he's a solid dude, solid dude. Yeah. <laughs> I like that guy. Um, yeah, and, and there, there's a couple others, but uh, we, we freelance far and wide. Uh, we do some work for Urbana Cafe. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, so um, we do a lot of, uh, cr you know, content creation, um, taking pictures of whatever product, whatever special of the week is at a restaurant. Um, you know, one day we might be working on tacos. Another day we might be working on biscuits you know might be working on coffee it's um it's a fun ride and you never know what the day is gonna bring i love it well and, and that's like how it is for me too and so when you mentioned things like content creation i gotta jump on the turkey story you were telling me that yeah i could tell I, you. like i don't even know i mean i, I want your tips of course too but like how did you start is this like a family thing yes like, uh -huh. you're doing like 60 plus turkeys and maybe less this year of course but like right so the past couple of years has been um you know we haven't been able to go at full capacity but 
the way the way the story started was when I was like eleven or twelve. Fr- uh, turkey frying was at its like antithesis, its peak of popularity. Right. And <laughs> people were blowing up their houses right and left, like <laughs> messing up, uh, you know, their their homes and setting their houses on fire. And um, me and my dad thought, you know, this is going to be a great bonding thing. We're going to go out. We're going to we're going to try to fry one of these turkeys, and you know, maybe we'll fry a couple Twinkies in between, or you know, like <laughs> have like a good time. Already. Basically, yeah. My dad's a <laughs> my dad's a, an older me, so it's a it's a fun when we get together. We get in trouble. <laughs> um, you can ask my mom all about that, but uh, so basically, the first year it was one turkey. We uh, it was snowing really bad. We had to put a tarp out, and we cooked underneath this this tarp all all day on this one turkey, and and it came out perfectly, and we loved it. So the next year, it was like, hey, let's let's do three, <laughs> and uh, you know, let's fry some Oreos, let's fry some, let's see what else we can fry. We'll fry some zucchini, yeah, and then you know, the next year it's like, hey, let's do five. The the neighbor guy wants uh one of his turkeys done and, and <laughs> oh yeah. And he's got quail too. And we can fry this quail. Oh. And so we fried some quail and we fried five turkeys and, and then it grew and grew and grew to all the neighbors, all my parents, friends coming over a big party, five fryers going 60 turkeys. Um, Insanity. Yeah. So it's all morning long. People will start coming at like seven o'clock in the morning, you know, and, and, you know, <laughs> drinking beers, uh, you of know, course, having cocktails. Yeah. It's um, I think it's a little liquid courage before they have to go face their family. Right. Yeah, exactly. You warm up for it. Yeah, exactly. Just warm up over the fryer. Uh, about how long would you say it takes to fry an average turkey? So if you're frying a turkey, there's there's definitely a difference in distinction between different types of birds that you would fry. Okay. So a bird that is more than 15, so, so I, t- I take that back. We've fried a 19-pound turkey before. Okay. But I'd say in the range of 12 to 15 or 16 pounds, is the perfect range for frying turkeys. Some of the bigger ones, the 30 pounders, 40 pounders, you can't fry those bad boys. Yeah. They are they are oven turkeys in the in the nth degree, the ones that uh, you know you see the grandmothers holding out either sides and Is that because of like just doneness effectively like Yeah, so what what's going to happen is the frying process is so quick. It takes about 45 minutes to, it's about three and a half minutes a pound. Okay. Um, it takes about 45 to you know 50 minutes. By the time it's in there that long, the outside is a bit charred, but you need to make sure you get all that meat cooked all the way through. Of it's, course. You know, it takes up about three and a half, three and a half minutes a pound. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you're, what are you, like, what's the device? I mean, is there like a, spe- I'm sure by now there's some sort of specific device to put it in, like a, a certain size pot or something like that. Yes. Designed for this. Yeah. So there's a big, it's a, I think it's a five gallon pot. It's a big you know, it's the same pot they used to make gumbo in. Like, okay. I'm sure they have them in the back. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, they're Your making cookware. soups. Yeah. Exactly. A quick store plug. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, if you think I'm not walking through storewares as soon as I get out of here, you're crazy. On the oil game, I'm assuming there's a specific oil that you recommend using for this? So there's a variety of oils you can use. You can use canola. You can use vegetable. You can use um, any kind of uh, oil you want. The one that I prefer using is peanut oil. Okay. Um, some people are allergic to nuts, so that it might not be for everybody's family. Okay. But I like peanut oil because it has the highest flash point. Oh, okay. And, uh, the smoke point is also very high too. Um, so it won't catch on fire or, or smoke away while you're cooking. If you get it a little bit too hot, if you're, um, um, once you're dropping a bird and you want it to be a little bit hotter than normal, cause as soon as you drop it, it's going to drop, uh, it's going to, exactly. Right. It's going to drop, uh, degrees. So. Yeah, so you just want to make sure you have a like a good, uh, and you can also do a blend of oils too. Oh, okay. Um, like if you want some more, um, I don't know, veg, I don't know, canola flavoring in your bird, or you prefer less peanutty, whatever. Yeah. You can mix these oils, and they'll sort of gain some of the qualities of the others. And interesting, oh, that's yeah. cool too. I uh, I was sort of wondering if there was any rhyme or reason to that, but the smoke and flash point uh, make a great point, or rather make great sense to me. And where I was going to go with this is, this sounds incredibly dangerous. I don't trust myself at seven it in the morning with can a flame be, yes. and oil. Yeah, so like, have you, well, A, have you had any bad experiences yet? Uh, I mean, Personally, no. We've burnt a turkey before. That has happened, yeah, 100%. I mean, I, but as far as, like, it catching fire, as far as, like, a turkey being ejected from the bucket and, like, flying over the house, like, no, that's never happened. But A little disappointing, honestly. No, but we definitely <laughs> <laughs> we definitely have seen the videos, like, on YouTube that is, like, um, you know, guy puts frozen turkey into scalding oil and it, like, explodes, like, next to his garage and 
So that was going to lead me into the tip. So I think a first huge tip that you just kind of covered there is the turkey's got to be thawed first. Got to be thawed. So if you're getting your turkey, you know, a week ahead of time, I wouldn't, all those bad boys are frozen. Right. You need to make sure you put that in the fridge and uh, de-thaw it for at least three days, I would say. Um, And the bigger birds, the longer. Yeah. You need to make sure that bad boy is thawed out. Any bit of ice or whatever is going to, ice basically is is water. So if you drop, you know, oil and water, don't really mix very well. And and, uh, Famously, (laughs) famously. don't get along. (laughs) Yes, famously. (laughs) And, um, yeah, so, you know, once those pockets hit and they they de-thaw, they just and uh, explode out of that oil, and um, it can be dangerous. Wow. Have you guys learned, like, other useful tips that you might not think of? Because in my head, here's how I'm looking at this. I'm like, all right, I got a giant turkey. I almost said it dirty. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But you got a giant turkey, and you're going to – I'm just assuming I'm going to lower it into this – Yeah, it's like a hot tub. It's like a hot tub. You're just nice and easy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, just, you haven't like, seen me get in a hot tub then. <laughs> you, uh, all right, you probably so jackknife into a hot tub, don't you? <laughs> full cannonball. I was like, so I'm going to re- revisit my uh, hot tub entry. But, yeah, I'm just assuming, man, I'm like, all right, we've got this giant, yeah, gumbo pot of boiling oil that we're going to slowly lo- lower the turkey into. Yeah. And then is that it? I mean, it, what am I missing? That's, that's it. Like, um, normally what I do with the bird is I'll hit it with Lowry's seasoning on the outside. Okay. Some people like the skin, that super crispy skin. And, and when they have the Lowry's on, it, it's like a nice salty mix, you know, good seasoned, sure. A uh, bit of a uh, flesh that they can eat. Um, I also inject it with, uh, Cajun butter. Mm. So that's what I'm picking up here today at the store for our Thanksgiving day. Um, they have a special Cajun butter here at Jungle Gyms that I um, like to use. They also have like a full line of, uh, you know, gumbo, injector. I just saw the display get put out the other yes. day while we were working on the uh, uh, gingerbread house. I think I saw it on Facebook that they had put out the display. <laughs> and that's why I'm up here right now. That's really cool. No, I was, I was going to ask you if you brined it too, because I was sort of curious as to... You can brine it, absolutely. I, well, I was curious as to the um, if the seasoning would stay on the skin once you dropped it in the fryer, if the oil would eat some of that. But it sounds like the answer is it will stick on. Yes, it, it can stick on. And if depending on what kind of brine you're doing, if you're doing like a salt water brine, or mm-hmm. more of like a buttermilk brine, depending, yeah. and you can do either, and they're both delicious. We've tried them both. I want to try the injectables though. Like now, knowing that's an option that I've never tried, I'm just kind of mad at myself. Yeah, and if my advice is so go ahead and when you're dethawing it, as soon as you can get into that skin even a little bit, go ahead and inject it as much as you can. And then right before you do it, maybe that morning, inject it again, let it sit for a couple hours, mm. really get the flavors in there. And yeah. then, um, Make sure you're up to temp, and it should all stay in there. No um, kidding. Yeah. How do you get it out? I, I know that's like a dumb question, but like so most I'm just imagining trying to pick up like a 20-pound no, yeah. weight out of hot oil. So there, there are these mechanisms that come with the turkey frying equipment, and oh. it's basically like a long rod that goes through the cavity of the turkey mm-hmm. and has a hook on the end of it and a base at the bottom. Oh, cool. So like, so it sits flat on the base, the bird sits here, and then the hook is on top. And then you have a, almost like an upside down clothes hanger mm-hmm. that sort of grabs that other hook and you can yank it out. Perfect. Take it over to a tray, let it cool down a little bit. Yeah. Take it out of its thing, wrap it up for the people and, and take, take off. Can you believe someone that looks like me has never eaten a deep fried turkey? I'm pretty surprised. So, so Mark, um, my family still does this tradition oh. every year. If you are in need of some liquid courage before this year's Thanksgiving, <laughs> and you are inoculated. Oh, I am. I, I'm fully. Then you're welcome to our house for, for Thanksgiving. I really appreciate that. I think I'm going to take you up on that because I am, dude, I am like dangerously curious about the way you described it with the injected Cajun butter sounds yeah. awesome. I'm so, I'm just curious to try. I've been oven cooking mine forever. I've, I've had a couple great birds in my day, yeah. but uh, this is a whole new, I can't believe it took me this long to get interested. It's a it's a family tradition at this point, and um, we love it. And we uh, we don't do quite sixty anymore. We do maybe like twelve or thirteen. That's still a good amount of turkeys. But you know, we um, COVID killed the deep fried turkey <laughs> it really game did. as well. It really did, man. <laughs> um, and and my parents downsize houses too, so they're um, 
they're in Newport, so they do birds for the Newport Fire Department, the Newport Police Department. Oh, that's awesome. And and you know they all come in the trucks with our sirens going, and we have a good old time. And we, you know, joke. I'm like, hey, you guys want a beer? And because <laughs> they can't, because they're on of duty. Of course, right? They can't yeah, drink yeah. unless they're really cool. <laughs> unless fire they're really department. cool, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, you I'm know, kidding everyone, really. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're not. I we're, I might have to bring you a, a case of wild ohio's cranberry brew that they just came out with oh. today that's the theme of the show as i keep talking about that today well that's i was listening to one of your um other podcasts the other day and, and you guys were on with utopia and, and that sounded um some of those brews kind of sounded uh had me licking my lips there. oh yeah dude that bourbon county stout that's gonna be a dangerous friday so maybe so tell you what if i come visit you on thursday you come visit me on friday here for bourbon county and we'll, I might, I might we'll be have make a that very weird weekend on 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 Black Friday, you want me to come to Jungle Gyms? I know it's a I, right. I have that only for you, Mark. You know only what? for you. Only, thank you. I was telling someone today. I was like, I have never been to Jungle Gyms in the fall or winter before. So I, it, which is funny because I'm like a fall and winter holiday weirdo, uh, and I kind of thought this would have been a, an obvious place to go visit, but I somehow never did. And I, and the way everyone talks about it in here, it should be crazy. Yeah. So really looking forward to it, Jake. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Are they doing any um, specials or uh, any any drops? Yeah. So there's a big if you in for those of you listening, if you jump back to last week's episode eight, uh, uh, Ferdinand talked in detail right about right, what they're about doing the with beers. Goose Island. Yeah. So there's a bunch of uh, there's like a cola variant of one of the stouts. That sounded really good. I, that's the one I'm the most excited about. There are a few others I forget specifics, but that's just a good plug. Listen to episode eight of the show, everyone. <laughs> so well, uh, Jake. Uh, before we wrap this up, do you have any social? You want to plug your socials? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram at uh, dust underscore village. Um, you can see some of the stuff we're working on. I, I hit the stories hard. Um, pretty interactive with everybody, and, and we have a good time. Also on Facebook, you can look up Dust Village. I'm there, and uh, dustvillage.com. Thanks for coming in today. <laughs> I am very much looking forward to eating your family's turkey. Uh, Mark, you're welcome at our house anytime, buddy. <laughs> All right, I don't think that the bomb bonnery needs much of an introduction if you're a Cincinnati local, but since this show is global, and I'm assuming some of you are not, here's a short one. They've been in business in the Cincinnati area for over 33 years. They're still owned by the original family members and friends. They are constantly working and tweaking recipes, always in motion. I love that about them. You can always find something new there. They also bring a lot of artistry to the table, and I think that's something that's gotten a little lost in the modern age of consumerism. Now, I have traveled all over the world today. No, I've traveled all over the world and still believe that the Bonbonneries got some of the best treats ever. And we carry them here in Jungle Gyms. Isn't that cool? Now, in the interview, you'll hear some talk of uh, ordering stuff. You can definitely do that for pickup from them or even set up to pick up, as I understand it, in one of the Jungle Gym's locations, which is so cool. Now, just to be very clear, you're ordering it from Bonbonnery. Uh, if you come into the jungle, we do tend to regularly carry what I refer to as their greatest hits, but we don't handle their orders, so you order from them, blah, 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 and we do not do any customization of their products here, so that's just a little heads up as well, okay? All right, meet Kelly. Yeah. For everyone else who's just tuning in, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you do the intro going forward. Kelly, you just got a new gig. There it is. That's um, right. That's well, fine. let me welcome you officially to the studio. Kelly Thank from the Bon Bonnery, a uh, local baking titan, as it were. Oh, go on. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> No, thank you so much for having us. We love Jungle Gems. We're big fans for forever and ever. I appreciate that too, and I, as am I. And uh, you know, it's funny. I, I'm not from Cincinnati originally. I talk about that occasionally mm -hmm. on here. But uh, when I first moved here, there were a few things I got pointed in the direction of when I got here. Mm -hmm. um, one of which I absolutely did not love, so I won't talk about it. I uh, think I can guess what it was. I'd there... be curious. Actually, you know what? Let's just, what do you think it was? Was it Skyline Chili? It wasn't, actually. That's the one what, I adopted. Really? That's the... like my new baby. Oh, I was going to say, it's like, because people who grew up here know that it's the best stuff in the world. It's and another... they have to be introduced to people, and you have to coach them to love it <laughs> if you move here. My extended family was mostly that way, except for like one aunt. I remember they were like, why is there so much cinnamon in the chili? <laughs> but uh, it was another uh, savory end of food product. Oh, is it Geta? 
No, I, you ah. know, Geta's been a hard one for me. East on the East Coast, we had Scrapple, so it's mm-hmm. not super far, but I yeah. didn't like that okay. either. But I was like, oh, that's fine. I'd rather just eat like bacon, ham, or pork. I'll just say it, whatever. I don't like La Rosa's. That was what? the one. Yeah, I know, right? Scandalous. Well, so and the scandal is on the East Coast, all of our pizza was like kind of like tart. <laughs> you know, it's like a, more mm-hmm. on like the spicy kind of that end yeah, of the tomato. Yeah, the and red so when pepper. I got here, right, and when you get here, it was just like. Oh, there is a lot of sugar happening in there. Oh that. my gosh. But and that's what makes it distinctive and wonderful. That's and true. Delightful. And so I will say, as I've gotten older, I definitely have kind of come to appreciate it. Now, what's mm. really funny to me about it is that I don't view it as pizza, though. I'm just like, it's La Rosa's. Like, it's its own brand. Well, okay, almost. I get that. Because if you know? someone is like, oh my God, we're going to order pizza, I'm like, cool. But if someone's like, we're going to order La Rosa's, I'm like, yes, right. I am here for this. But I'm also the weird person as far as like sugar on your pizza. I'm that terrible, horrible person who's like, is there pineapple on this pizza? Can there be double pineapple on this pizza? Can so there I'm be with triple? You there too. <laughs> I want the balance. So I'm like, get, make my spot sauce a little tangy. And then I want that acidic. That was the word I was okay, trying to come contrast. up with before. Exactly. That's okay. what it's all about. Balance and contrast. I love it. See, but the third thing, the third thing was the bombonnery. Nice. And the bombonnery, I would say, out of all three of them, that's probably the place I spend the most time, oh. whether that's embarrassing or not to No, my... why is that embarrassing? <laughs> like you have very fine taste in pastry. Right. Well, so tell for those of you who are uh not hip to the bombonnery, what's wrong with you? But more <laughs> importantly, tell us a little bit about the history of bombonnery. All right, so for those who are unfamiliar with the Bon Bonnery, I am excited to introduce you to us. So the Bon Bonnery has been around for about 38 years. Um, it was started by Mary Pat Pace and Sharon Butler like 38 years ago. And it was they were like a not a catering company so much as they provided the desserts for restaurants who didn't have a pastry chef. So they just made cakes. That was like their thing. And they sold them to these restaurants. Um, but as like customers went to these restaurants and discovered their amazing cakes, they're like, where can we get these where I don't have to like buy dinner first right so then they were like i <laughs> guess we should sell to more people so it's funny they the location of the bon bonnery it's tucked into east wall uh like next to east walnut hills it's in o'brienville and it's in like the back side of a building because no one ever worried about like customers finding it so the only people who need to find us are our vendors it's fine so now it's like it's like a little maze to get around there but once you get in the bakery oh my goodness we've we've expanded so beyond cakes into like cookies, brownies, like European traditions, like eclairs and French chocolate mousse. Um, it basically any sort of like deliciousness under the sun. You can find <laughs> either exactly it or a version of it at Bon Bonnery. We still have a signature tort. It's our opera cream. It is a double top. To- double chocolate chip cake with like white chocolate opera cream filling and then it has a dark chocolate marquee glaze around the outside and dark chocolate curls. It's like the perfect contrast of like the deep dark richness of chocolate with like the the bright sweetness of white chocolate and then there's like some specialty liqueurs and an espresso in there it's just uh, it's a very complex very rich cake that is just absolutely amazing i think if i'm not mistaken it's like the consistently voted the number one cake in at it least is. cincinnati if not ohio yes it it's very very it's it's our best seller and it's the it's the kind of cake that inspires other people so it's been made into like seven hills roasts and opera cream coffee yep. uh, that we also sell at the Bon Bonnery and uh, we've done I think we did like a partnership with uh, an ice cream brand so there's an opera cream ice cream for a little oh. while and right now there's an opera cream beer with platform beer company so and right now great. I oh got, my gosh I, I got to taste that at the event that you at had opera fest yes oh. opera fest I didn't <laughs> opera know an fest. official name an I was just like Pat said fest. show up and I said okay <laughs> <laughs> exactly so yeah it's I mean, we have so many things there that it's 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 just a delight for anyone who has a sweet tooth. Oh yeah, yeah. and I so I was I was so old school. I was even there when they were brewing it with blank sa- slate. Yes, R.I.P. Blank slate. <laughs> oh. uh, but it's it's so cool. Oh wow! I'm sorry to get stuck on the opera cream ice cream now. I'm like that is something I know. I, I, I need ha- to come back. <laughs> I agree. I um I don't want to say who the original maker was because I not sure if I'm right. It oh, was before sure. my time, before I started working there. But I remember buying some um, from a store and just being like, this is amazing and delicious. And it just like never came back. So yeah. greeters, if you're out there and you want to yeah. do a partnership with us, do an opera cream icing or an I- opera cream ice cream. Like, oh, come that'd talk, be amazing. Come find me. Yeah, that'd maybe. Be so good. Maybe we can. I can broker that pre- peace treaty. I would be. I would like. <laughs> yes. 
I actually think I know someone, so we'll see. But I, <laughs> okay, fantastic. That would be an amazing, yeah. Um, graders, I'm being very serious about this. I, I alone would make this <laughs> a successful venture. Maybe you put it next to your chunky, chunky hippo right. and your Ohio State Buckeyes. Yeah, and UC. they've got yes. all the other local yes. Cincinnati brands. I'm waiting for them to do the Mark Boris and ice cream one <laughs> summer. You know, I don't know what the clever name will be or what it'll have. And it'll be like, you know, beard shavings probably. <laughs> They're really going unorthodox <laughs> with this new flavor. I would, I actually... <laughs> I'm very curious. I feel like there's you can learn a lot by someone by saying what your signature ice cream flavor would be. Yeah. So I think you should spend some time thinking about that. I will. I'll bring okay. you know by the time the sh the episode airs, I will. I'll make sure that's part of my uh, catch up after the interview. Plays. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I want to hear. And you can judge me. Yeah, it's probably gonna have a hot cream tort in it. Uh, I you know I had a question. <laughs> I was talking with someone at the bakery today. They were like, hey find this out. How long have you all been, has the opera cream tort, is that like since the inception of the business or is yes. that? Okay. Forever and ever, the opera cream tort is one of the things that have stuck the entire time. I think our chocolate chip, uh, our chocolate chip cookie has stayed almost exactly the same. Um, we have some, our uh, pastel butter cookies or mm -hmm. there are little tea cookies. Those yeah. have stayed the same. And oh my gosh, can I just say they're the simplest things in the world. It's just like a, like a little vanilla butter cookie with just a little white chocolate icing on top. But darn it, if they aren't like the best cookies in the world, they're just tiny, just tiny. There's, they're like one bite cookies. So you don't have to feel bad about eating just Even one, yeah. but you never one eat handful. just one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, I didn't know a serving size came by the bucket. That's impressive. Exactly. <laughs> I, you know, that's like one of the only things I think I haven't tried there. Really? Is that silly? Like I eat the cutout cookies all the time. You know, it was like, yeah. I, and that ends up, I'm you, okay. So something I, you know, in my research reading about, um, Sharon having like a bit of an art background mm -hmm. or maybe more than a bit of an art background. It wasn't very detailed, mm -hmm. but uh, I love the visual aspect. Right. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's become so not popular to talk about, but it gets mentioned a lot, right. That we like eat with our eyes. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is I normally go in there for all like the really rich decadent stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like one of your, uh, the double fudge brownies. And, uh, I think we, uh, we joked about the, uh, the banoffee pie, which oh, I would like right. sell uh. my family out for <laughs> bananas, caramel cream. You can't go wrong. Really? It's, seriously. And that chocolate layer in the crust oh, is so stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> and so if Bob Bonnery, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> bring, bring that back. back. Yeah. Bring More that back often. more. Than, make yeah. it a regular okay oh my noted gosh. Uh, <laughs> i think we just found your ice cream flavor it's been off pie i think it might actually you know what's funny <laughs> that is With the those, uh, you could do the the greater's chocolate chunks, chunks in, there. in there oh my yeah. gosh and like some graham pieces and, Ooh, and see and i'm, and and I'm a banana. sucker if you use real banana too which mm -hmm. is why i like yours so much because mm -hmm. there's not even a hint of that faux banana no, flavor no. and not that there ever would be at the bonbonnery in the yeah. first place but like you know that creeps in a lot more and more these yeah, days yeah that artificial flavoring bonbonnery is a from scratch bakery we do not touch that artificial like banana cloying flavory stuff that's not that's not our jam yeah no, no. exactly and, but you make your own jam probably too we so. actually we actually don't make our own jam, but we, oh! I know. This one, we, okay. So we're not a from scratch jam place. We, we partner with this, uh, this, uh, small little farm out in Indiana called Dillman Farms and we like make trips up there and they make like the our jam specially for us in like these giant big buckets and then they store it for us and every time we need more jam we're like we're coming for more jam and we have to make like a trip out to Indiana yeah so it's like we don't make our jam from scratch but we get it from people who do, who do? Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> you sourced it properly <laughs> that's right well that kind of makes a little sense too because I feel like that fits with the brand it's obviously mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense it's something that I appreciate a lot about working at the jungles there's a lot of if we don't make it in-house we make get it from someone right. like you all who make it in-house and yeah but i mean we go through so much jam especially during the holidays one of our cakes uh the bumbleberry tort has a uh, christmas cake usually. oh my gosh it's yeah. so good it's my got, mom's listening to this the, like the, bumble, the bumbleberry is right coming back <laughs> first week of december bumbleberry is coming back but it has uh red raspberry preserves in it and we go through buckets and buckets of this so we couldn't possibly make that in-house but yeah. over the summer we had a strawberry rhubarb scone that was brand new and we made the jam from for that from scratch just because like we didn't have a strawberry rhubarb jam right yeah so that's yeah, so that. if we don't got it we'll make it but that's yeah. really cool i love that about you all and, and you know so you mentioned that the december menu is coming up and look yes. i know some bakeries do the thing but what i like so much about going to the bonbonnery in addition to having uh you know the top 40 available at most times you know what i mean like i can get <laughs> yeah. all the bangers but every time i go in there there is something new and i'm in there i would say at least every other week on a saturday uh and i, I feel like every time i go in i'm like there's some new treat yeah. here that i've either never even heard of and i'm like yeah i'm trying that today you know 
Um, what was the one I grabbed somewhat recently? I guess it was probably not that recent now because I don't know how the time works anymore. Mm -hmm. But that vanilla latte cupcake that you all did over the oh, summer. Oh, wait. The vanilla. Okay. So there was the latte cupcake, which was it was new this year. And yes. it was just like a vanilla cake cupcake with an espresso cream in the middle and on top. Then it has an espresso moon glaze and they um, put a little bit of powdered espresso on top. Oh, my gosh. It's Something I personally would have never gone for because I lean chocolate. But I was like, ooh, espresso, oh vanilla. Gosh. Let's try it. It was it's so good. It was one of the best things I've ever tried. I well, mean, I, I don't know back. why I was surprised. We, we loved it. It's definitely coming back. And we do... We we do have that same like core group of things that we have all the time. Like there would be a, like, I don't even know what would happen if we took the molasses cookies off of our menu. Oh yeah. I think someone would tr probably try and burn us down or something <laughs> like molasses cookies. You're like, like, Mark, what are you doing here with the torch again? I think there was one time once since I've been there that we ran out of molasses cookies and it really was like the next three people asked for molasses cookies and they're like, you are out of molasses. It was, it was truly like we like, we, it was like we let, it was like we were house sitting for them and let their dog out and just let their dog go. You're like, it's and fine. He'll come it was, back, right? It's like, they're, they're, they will be back. Like, come back tomorrow. We are yeah. baking more. But it was just like, no, we need those. But the the rotating menu, it happens um, usually around like the first of, of every month. Mm -hmm. But we kind of like go like a whole week sort of thing. So if like the first of the month is on like a Thursday, yeah. we'll start the menu like the Monday of that week. So mm -hmm. December's menu actually starts, I think on the 29th, whatever that it's like Monday, the Monday is. after Thanksgiving. Yeah, cool. exactly. And this will be airing if I, and everybody's listening to it, but it'll be airing, I guess the 17th. So we'll be okay, ahead so of you Thanksgiving. Got, you got so some, you got time. some time. Yeah. So place your Christmas orders now because it's going to, yeah. it's going to be bonkers, but the December menu is up. So you can, you can look through it. We've got that bumbleberry tort. Uh, we've got, of course, our opera cream and our carrot. We've got my one of my favorite things that we make every Christmas. It's the Yule log. <laughs> I was hoping like, you'd say that. Oh my god, I love our Yule log. <laughs> so it's the most delicious chocolate. Cake. You said you were a chocolate person. Oh yeah. So, and, oh my is, gosh. It, I saw that. Oh. It's got cute little mushrooms on it. And I was like, Oh my god, I love this already. So it's like chocolate cake that's rolled up with chocolate cream, and it's covered in this like Belgian chocolate icing, and then it's got chocolate shavings. So it's absolutely delicious. It's basically just like the best cake roll ever. Right. And then they make all of these. The decorators make all of these hand spun sugar decorations to put on top yeah. and they make a different little scene every single year so they've had mushrooms in the past i don't know if they'll have them this year i don't think they finalized the designs on it sure. um, but like last year they had like a little toy deer that went on top with some oh. holly leaves it was it's they're just beautiful and delicious. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, it's I, the best. The whole day, I'm just going to sit here thinking, like, smelling <laughs> just, a weeks, just a yeah. couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks. I can't wait. Uh, you know, I was going to ask you, though, since this is airing pre-Thanksgiving, are if somebody's listening right now, like, oh, i got to order one of these, do you think it's too late for Thanksgiving action? Uh, no, the 17th? Um... No, I don't think so. You probably you could probably call like right now and like and and order something or put something on hold. Yeah. I would definitely recommend calling now though because it's Thanksgiving and right. everyone is ordering. Exactly. So, so the sooner you can place your order, the if better. Not, this is prep for Christmas, all yeah, exactly. And any other holidays you're celebrating. Yeah, in December, exactly. Place you know? your orders soon. So. Oh, I'm into it. Yeah, but uh, speaking of Thanksgiving in November, so we do have some specialty stuff for this month for November. Okay. So we've got our um, we've got a not our. So the U log is like the Christmas version of it, and we have like yep. a different version for Thanksgiving. It's called the pumpkin roulade. Oh. So it's got a pumpkin cake that is rolled up with a spiced cinnamon cream, and then it has caramel buttercream on the outside, caramel drizzle, and then it's got like marzipan pumpkins and sugar leaves. It's so pretty, and it is so good. Oh my gosh, that sounds yeah. incredible! It is. How have I missed that one? I don't know. I'm actually like a little mad at myself. I, I was going to bring a piece today for you to try, but they like literally ran out like at the last minute and they were making them as I was leaving. Like they had, they had the cake all spread out and I was like watching them. I was like, is this yeah. going to be done in 15 minutes? No, it is not. All right. So I brought you something else. Well, instead. I'm still excited. Oh, okay. I can't wait. Well, well, let's move to that. What, what's okay. in the, what's in the box? All right. So listeners, I brought a signature pink bonbonnery box. Uh, that is filled with lots of pastries for Mark because when um, I told him I would be coming for this, I would bring him pastries and he got very excited. <laughs> so I, I hope I have delivered, though I didn't know I you were... I tried to match, by the way. Is that weird? <laughs> I... So I don't know, <laughs> listeners, uh, if you've ever seen Mark, but he's typically wearing like a very vibrant, lively, amazing sweater and he is currently wearing a highlighter pink, <laughs> highlighter pink sweater with a bald eagle, eagle flying against a mountain skate. It is beautiful and majestic. You're right. Yeah. Um, I, I bought it at a really gaudy sweatshirt sale. I always love, there's this one guy, this actually it was, I did an episode about it a couple weeks ago for the Circleville Pumpkin Show. Mm -hmm. There's always this one dude that has the 
I I say the worst, right? But I buy one every year. But <laughs> it's always something like this. I'm like, yeah, a bald eagle flying in front of a mountains on a bright pink sweatshirt. Yes. Yeah, I probably need yeah, that. Absolutely, absolutely. The he only- doesn't like if I say that they're not great, but but no, but they are great. That's the thing. <laughs> Just wear it with pride. Right. Oh, that's, I just that's like everything else. I'm like, this You wear is the fun. sweater. The sweater doesn't wear you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> this is a beautiful friendship already. Oh. I'm sorry I to brought distract, you pastries. but yes. Like that. Of course, I'm going to be like your favorite person. So yeah, I didn't right. realize you were a huge chocolate person. So that's I didn't okay. bring a ton of chocolate. I apologize. Oh I was sticking with the season. I'm so still pretty well-rounded, both physically speaking <laughs> and with regards to my all right, treats. So I'm, I'm opening the box right now. Here we go. So, all right. Oh. So... Oh, I'm gonna move. I don't know if the, you can hear the paper, but I'm basically arranging everything so that Mark can see all of the beautiful pastries. Okay. Oh my gosh! All right, so we should take a like a picture. Yeah, let me do that. Okay, so we got our picture. In. Got tell our me, picture. tell me what I'm looking at today, all Kelly. Right. Besides uh, my impending doom, <laughs> delicious. Doom. All right, so we are gonna start with what Mark has informed me is one of his favorites. <laughs> it is the iced pumpkin cookie. So if you're familiar with our orange blossom cookie at all, it's similar in shape and texture. It's a really soft fluffy cake-like cookie. But aside from that, it's totally different. The The cookie itself is just, like I said, soft and warm and it's got lots of spices in it and it's made with real pumpkin. And it's just like, oh, it's just, it's just decadent and delightful. And it's got this brown butter icing on it and a sprinkle of cinnamon, uh, cinnamon on it. So it's like if a pumpkin spice latte was a cookie and not a sweet. Yeah. So like that's one of my only complaint about pumpkin spice lattes, which I adore, is just that they hurt your teeth if you drink them for too uh, no, long. No, for sure. And what I like about this, and you mentioned the texture a lot, which I'm glad, mm-hmm. uh, it feels like getting a hug in October. Yes, <laughs> it is. It is 100%. This is a cookie hug right here. All right. So next week we've got one of my personal favorite cookies. This is the soft ginger leaf. So for people who like gingerbread but don't like it when like it's like crunchy or really crispy or baked within an inch of its life, this is the cookie for you because it's oh. it's much softer. It's very melt in your mouth and it's paired with this like lemon glaze on it. So it's like, I don't know if you've ever had ginger with lemon. Actually, you know, what's funny is the first time I ever tried that combination was thanks to all of you because uh, it was a couple Christmases mm-hmm. ago I picked it up, but it was the little squirrel, uh, the baked hard yes. gingerbread cookies with the lemon icing. Yes. I was like, why is this not always paired together? It's so delicious. Exactly. It's just, you got the spice from the ginger and you've got the brightness from the citrus. And in this one, it's also got all of those, like the warmth from the cinnamon clove nutmeg. So it's just like all of the different tastes hitting your face at the same time. It. It's delightful. So if the, I don't think I've ever seen that one in there before. Really? Yeah. Oh, we only make it like once a year because it's actually a very difficult cookie to make. Really? The, yeah, because you have to be really careful about um, not over baking it because then the texture can be ruined. Oh. But also it's laminated. So if you can look at the cookie, it's got like all this texture in it. Yeah. So aside from the fact that it's just oh, like so cool. a delicious yeah. cookie, it's, it's difficult to make. So every time that we put it on the menu, the, the cookie bakers are like, oh. <sighs> Right. Like, like, all right, we're making this again. Over. It's like, it's just, they're just a time consuming cookie. Of but course. I am, but it's the, the artwork on it is beautiful. And I love that you can see the ridges like you'd say. Oh yeah. yeah it's that's awesome. All right. So the next to this, we've got your old fashioned classic snickerdoodle, which is, it's the best version of a snickerdoodle because like most. Challenge like, accepted. <laughs> so like, like you can have a different kind of snickerdoodle that's like really, really crunchy and crispy, or you can have ones that are just like too soft and like fall apart. And this has like, this is neither of those things. So it's got like some firmness on the outside and the middle is like, like chewy and like the softer side. So it's got the perfect texture and it's got that classic snickerdoodle taste with all the tons of brown sugar and lots of cinnamon and like a little bit of crunchy sugar on top. It's just like heat this up. It is the best snickerdoodle you'll ever had. I love it. Promise. And what's after the snickerdoodle? All right. So after the snickerdoodle, we've got uh, the last cookie that I brought for you. It is my favorite. So this is a cotton candy turkey. So (laughs) so, I've seen them as pigs in other months. Is that correct? Yes. So we usually have this cookie like not every month, but most months. And it's like a pig normally. And then like for Easter, we do like sometimes we'll do like a cotton candy, like little chick. Um, we obviously do turkeys right now. Um, we do ghosts in October, <laughs> but <awesome. laughs> the the base of the cookie is still the same. It's like, it's a very fluffy, almost biscuit like cookie. That's not quite as sweet as most cookies that you'd find. But what really sells this cookie for me is the vanilla. It is packed Ooh. with vanilla and it's just a very good vanilla cookie. And the 
the cotton candy description is just for the texture because it's really that soft. Over the summer, we tried a cotton candy compound with it and we had a cotton candy sugar. So it really was a cotton candy flavored oh, cotton wow. candy pig. That's funny. It was really funny. Um, and then we switched back <laughs> because <laughs> you don't want a cotton candy flavored turkey. That's weird. Right. But the cookie itself is covered with just like a very simple vanilla icing and then it's dipped in some uh, autumn sprinkles and it's, it's it looks like a little turkey. Yeah, it's adorable. It's very precious. And I think, well, you mentioned when you come to the bakery, you you go for like the most decadent, over-the-top stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're there every day, it's just like you're not eating like right. a whole thing every day. So and most of the people that I know that work there, all of our favorites are the really simple things. Yeah. Like mine is the cotton candy turkey. The wedding coordinator's thing is chocolate chip cookies. I like, was just going to say, I think when I was talking to uh, Heather there a few months ago, randomly, before mm -hmm. I started here, and she was just like, hey, next time you come in, you got to try one of our chocolate chip cookies. Oh and I was gosh. like, and it was, by the way, it was amazing. Um, but it was that funny thing where I just never thought, you know, like, I knew it would be yeah. good, but I was like, mm. and I kind of wanted to touch on something while we were still on this one. Cause you mentioned the vanilla flavor and mm -hmm. it's time for me to hop on my soapbox. And I know you'll feel me on this, that, uh, something I love about the bonbonery. And I really thought about this when I tried that vanilla latte cupcake, mm -hmm. uh, earlier this year, where for whatever reason, in like the public vernacular, vanilla has become synonymous with quote plain oh my gosh it and i know i've me. fallen victim to that a few times myself because you know i'm like a human and mm -hmm. uh we get caught up in group think but that's so inaccurate yes. and it, mm -hmm. you it's one of those things that well if you've had vanilla that's plain i think you're going to the wrong place yes you know or you're getting like the artificial vanilla flavoring right. which doesn't count no it doesn't because the real vanilla like the really good vanilla you see the, like the little flecks of the vanilla bean in there and it's honestly one of the most expensive ingredients we buy because we get the really really good stuff we yeah. buy it by the gallon and we have like vanilla bean paste and it's just like oh my gosh it's just the best vanilla in the world it's just it's warm and it's heady and it just it's just, it's like you said, it's a hug. It's like yeah. just vanilla is the best, in my personal opinion, is one of the best, most complex, underrated flavors ever because I think we've gotten spoiled. It's just, it's everywhere now. Yeah. And I just feel like vanilla needs more attention. I agree. And I'm glad that you're bringing, and look, <laughs> you know, it's that thing where you're like, oh, sorry to bring you chocolate. I'm like, no, expand my horizons. That's what this is all there about. There you go. This cookie. Yeah, there you that's going to do it. I can't wait. All, all right. right. What we got So next? we've got a couple more things. So we're going to move into As the bars. On everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is our Buckeye Brownie. So this is on the menu a couple times a month uh, or a couple times a year. And it is a chocolate fudge brownie with a layer of peanut butter cream and then chocolate ganache on top and chopped peanuts. So it's really like if you love Buckeyes, this this is your brownie. This is your go-to oh, treat. Yeah. But one of the other really nice things about this is it's gluten-free. So oh. we have a lot of gluten-free items and they're not items that we like. Oh, we had an original version and then we had to like finagle it and switch up our recipe. And now we have a less good gluten-free version. It's like, <laughs> no, like... People who need gluten-free items deserve better than that. I agree. This brownie is is and always has been gluten-free. It, awesome. it is what it is, and it's delicious. It doesn't need gluten at I all. I was a big fan of your brownie lineup. This is one I definitely need to try. It's, I haven't yet, actually. Really? Oh, yeah. you're going to love it. It's I'm so good. I'm such a sucker for that one and the tuxedo one, and then the mint oh, one shows yeah. up around the holidays, yes, and then I'm like, back. oh, I'm like, you know, yeah. So Yay. today's the day. Today is the day. All right, and next to it, we've got the Apple Orchard Bar, which is just has all of the things in it. Yeah. Um. So it's got like a, uh, a cookie base, and then it has cream cheese and sliced granny granny smith apples and like um what is what is it called apple butter and then a caramel drizzle it's oh just gosh. there's just so much happening in this bar and normally when there are that many different ingredients and you get like a little overwhelmed you can't taste everything not this it's like everything is meant to be there and it tastes so good oh that sounds like, like walking on an apple orchard yeah just exactly it's just, it all up yeah this tastes wait. like fall yeah so it's very this is like a, a very autumnal tradition for us. It's so, so good. That's really cool. All right. And last, but certainly not least, the um, tangerine moon cake. So curious to try that. I was Re looking at it on Facebook. It? Ah. I know. I, and again, I really, so I also really love citrus things. Mm -hmm. So that's one I always think about trying. And then, I end up buying a bunch of, I go through my usual lineup. I'm like that weird person. I'm like, I'm not really a creature of habit, but every so often I'll be like, mm, 
uh, let's go with, let's, let's play the hits, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I could try something new or I can get the thing that I've been thinking about for like seven weeks. Exactly. Because that'll, that's what yes. totally will happen. I'll walk in and I'm like, oh, coconut cream cake, huh? That sounds really delicious, but that's not what I came in today. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Sorry, I'll see you next week. Like, and then next week, and it, it won't, won't be, be there. there. Exactly. It won't be there. I, I Literally, you all have capitalized on FOMO. So, sorry. <laughs> but I, I firmly believe in not postponing joy. And if you're at the Bon Bonnery, if you see something that you want, get that thing. I like your get attitude. That's Thank good. you. I try. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about the tangerine yes, moon please. cake. Sorry. It is a tradition every single November. This is my birthday cake for several years oh. in a row. So it is made with a vanilla genoise sponge cake. So it's really soft, but it still has like a really good texture to it. It's got some bite. It's not super like fluffy, like a chiffon. And then it has a Parisian cream in the middle that is made with citrus, um, orange juice and fresh lim- orange zest. It's just very, very bright, very light. And it complements the the cake perfectly and then the outside is like one of my favorite buttercreams that we make it's a citrus buttercream and it's just it has the perfect silky texture and it's got that bright citrusness from it and the top is direct is uh decorated like this beautiful autumn scene there's marzipan pumpkins and sugar flowers and little branches it. it's just it's so cute it's yeah. like the prettiest cake i love it it so. looks beautiful seriously that little light orange to it the little so tinge good. Oh, that's going to be dangerous. Today's yeah. going to be dangerous. Today's going to be a good day for you. Yeah, it really is. I'm wondering, should I try something? You know I what? think Let's, you should try I, some of it now. Yeah, I brought that's, four. That's what I was going to say. I was like, I see forks, and uh, I know this episode has mostly already just been me breathing softly <laughs> into the microphone. All right, we'll try, let, let's try the cake first. All right. So one thing about our cakes is that you can you know, feel oh, no, free to okay. eat. Go ahead. Yeah. Is that they should always be served at room temperature so that we keep them cool, but they should be served at room temperature because it's so much better. Okay, so Mark's face right now. We should take a picture. <laughs> so it was very much, there was like an eye roll happening. Like, <laughs> like, they, they like in the back of my head here. Exactly. I'll give you the camera. Feel free okay, to okay, okay. do it anymore. All right. So I'm going to, oh, this. you know, I'm just going to record a video of this. A, vi- a video of a podcast. <laughs> yeah, this is the future. <laughs> I want it to be a video show one day for moments like this so we can actually show. The way you describe the buttercream is so perfect. Right? It's so silky. It's like silky and soft and s- and sweet, but like not so sweet to be cloying and you know what I mean? Again, yeah. You all have really balanced treats. I think that's really one of the things to me that separates a bonbonnery from like any other bakery, at least in my Aww. experience, right? Thank you. Well no, but you really do f- capture a nice balance between that. The textures are right. I uh you, I mean the cake itself even was just like spongy mm-hmm. and soft and beautiful. That is stupid good. Okay, let's take a bite of the uh turkey right. cookie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, you yeah. get the vanilla? Yes, absolutely. Great vanilla. The texture of the sprinkles, I, it really adds right. a lot. I, oh, that's good. That's like, I feel so weird eating in front of people usually. <laughs> so you're like, you should feel privileged right now. I, I feel very special. All right, I'm, t- I'm stopping the video now. That's totally fine. Okay. Oh, that was awesome. Okay. Um. Oh, my gosh. I'm just sitting here like, well, yeah. how weird is it if I just eat the entire box? It will not be weird at all. Trust yeah. me. Also, like, I... I mean, I get the stuff every day, right. essentially. It's one of those things like I'll be sitting at my desk and I'll be like, what treat do I want today? <laughs> and it's, it's exactly like you said, where I'm like, you know what? I could have a fancy cupcake or I could do this. And I always go back to cotton candy turkey or cotton candy pig or whatever shape is happening right, right there. Chocolate chip cookie. Ooh, when we have our peanut butter cookies, man, uh, I can talk myself into thinking that I'm being healthy because there's so much peanut butter in it. Yeah. I'm like, there's protein. It's going to fill me up. I'm going to be fine. Right. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> um, I just, I should jump in. I just tried the, uh, what was it, the fall leaf? Is that yeah, what you call it? Yeah, the soft ginger leaf. That is, okay, so I'm a huge gingerbread fan. I think consistently, every year around the holidays, I do this whole uh, quest for the best gingerbread. Mm-hmm. And you all win every year. Aww, um, this is, I normally eat like the crispier one, so mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not against the soft one. But I like how the texture of this is. I mean, it is soft. It's like pillowy. And again, I'm getting a little bit. This is like a winter hug now. You know, (laughs) this is like a sweater I'm putting on. But, you know, I know we mentioned it earlier, but the brightness of the the lemon glaze on here is so it's eight kinds of It really comes through. It's such a perfect pairing. And if you're sitting there listening to this going, I don't know about that, Mark. Just take a look (laughs) at me. I know about it. And you can trust me. (laughs) That's so good. 
Oh my gosh. This like, if someone gave me a box like this, as just like a present, like, oh, like here, I work at a bakery and he's like this thing, this would be like, they would be my new favorite person in the world. Oh yeah, for so sure. I'm you get a lot like, of weird really... emails from me going forward now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, Kelly, want to come on the podcast again? No, I didn't set up the microphones. No, I'm not actually recording everything. <laughs> and also like... <laughs> I'm coming to you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Also, this is my address. Can you just drop it off <laughs> on my doorstep? I'd be like, I thought we were recording a podcast. This that's is promotional fun. stuff, right? This is helping the bakery. Yeah, yeah. totally. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Well, we, I mean, it really would be fun, though, if we did like a quarterly thing or something like that. I mean, if you want a box of pastries every quarter, like, right. I mean, I, of course, I mean, but I'm like one of those weird seasonal people that I'm like, oh, a change of things. That's exciting to me. And yeah. I'm like really on board. Okay. Before, you know, we, I know we dove in hard on this, but something that we talked about in person that I wanted to bring up to you Ready. before we wrap this. Okay. What are some of your favorite, uh, treats on the menu that have not come back oh my gosh i think so, i know one that we both agreed on yeah. but I'm, i just want to hear it straight so um so i've actually even though i've been the marketing director for for not super long only about a year and a half now mm -hmm. i've actually been uh in the bon bonneries like circle for over 10 years i started there when i was uh, 19 just working at the counter so i am intimately familiar with most of the things they've they've made for the past 10 to 15 years that's awesome so um a couple of things that um, they've made that I loved that haven't come back in a while. Mm -hmm. um, one was the uh, the white chocolate macadamia nut brownie. Uh, that was a really popular thing when I first started. Um, and I, th I think it was just like the fact that like white chocolate is very polarizing. It can yeah. be like cloying. It can be over sweet. And macadamia nuts are really, really expensive. Like, so the brownie itself would be really expensive. Right. Um, but it was just, it was just, the white chocolate was just really, really well balanced with the macadamia nuts. And it was just had the best texture to it. It was absolutely delicious. And I went off to college and I came back and it was off the menu and I hadn't seen it since. So it's just like, oh, I miss that brownie. But I, yeah. I don't think it's going to come back anytime soon because there was a reason they took it off the menu is because people weren't buying it. It was too expensive. It, right. The white chocolate scared them off. But for the record, you shouldn't be scared of white chocolate. Yeah. You should be scared of not having white chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's that's one thing that I I really really loved. Uh, but my absolute favorite thing that we've pretty much ever made is the coffee caramel creme brulee. Yes, and we made it once like three years ago and I remember trying it and just losing my mind over it our creme brulee is is fantastic the oh, texture absolutely. is right the vanilla is right everything is right in our creme brulee I was laughing um, they're like do you want the sugar caramelized like, yes, I was like yes absolutely does do. anybody say no to that and you shouldn't sell to them <laughs> no exactly well I mean it's for people who like maybe will caramelize it at home underneath their like their broiler so like I get it okay, but I'll so, let those like, yeah we'll, we'll let it slide yeah like show me your broiler card yeah exactly I'm sorry, do you have your own blowtorch at home? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they've, it's completely spoiled me for a creme brulee at restaurants because like you go to restaurants and it's like creme brulee, eight, 10, $12. And I'm like, are you kidding? I can get way better creme brulee at the Bon Bonnery for $4. Like, absolutely not. But we, for a while, we were like switching up the flavors every now and then. And we did a coffee caramel. And I remember just thinking it was, it was perfect the coffee was right the caramel was right it was really well balanced it tasted exactly like a caramel latte like yeah. it was amazing and it just didn't sell because it wasn't vanilla and it was like a darker brown and people were like oh my god this is different i'm a frightened <laughs> so so it went off the menu and i remember being really disappointed and this year being like in the marketing department now i have a little bit more like way so this fall I was like let's bring back the coffee caramel creme brulee let's put that out there and everyone was like okay fine so we put it on the menu and I like hit it really hard on social media I was like everyone go get this creme brulee it is the best in the oh, world because I'm like real? yeah it's oh my gosh I it's 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 so good and it still didn't sell the way that I wanted to do because people would be like do you have vanilla creme brulee and we'd be like We've got coffee caramel and they would say no thank you oh, I bummer. think I think we should just call it the coffee or the Caramel latte, creme brulee. I, I feel like I it would just be would, better. Yeah, and I feel like from a branding perspective, that's yeah. like a, it, people are, I don't know why the word coffee might be off-putting, but I think, yeah. you know what it is? I think because coffee inherently, when you just say that, sounds yeah. better. Yeah, I mean, it's like white chocolate. It's polarizing here. That's like, oh, I don't like coffee. But if I had a dollar for every single time I heard someone who works at the bakery say, I don't like coffee, but I love our latte cupcakes, like I, I would love, have, I I would have enough to buy a 
creme brulee at a regular restaurant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, I'm so sad I missed it too, because oh, like, so that was one of my favorite. That's like one of those, like, I kept hoping it would just come back. And I kept thinking because of the somewhat irregularity of my visits that I was like, well, maybe I just missed it. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll catch it next summer. Or, but apparently not. So, no. I'm just gonna well, here's the thing. I will it. fight for it again. Like, I will fight for it. I will continue fighting for you, caramel latte, creme brulee. <laughs> I love right. you. We'll the name. I will. Co I'm coming for you, baby. I will do my. <laughs> I'll do my work on the heavy lifting and get people in there too. Okay. I'm so, down. Seriously, if that ends up coming up, just let me know in advance for real. Dear we'll listeners, yeah. <laughs> dear listeners, try this incredible thing that we just wasted five minutes <laughs> telling you about. So good. That's how good it is, though. Yeah, it's, it's worth that the good. discussion. It's that good i'm trying to think if there's anything else that i'm like this is the best oh my gosh the sunrise scone um I've never tried that one all right because it's barely on the menu okay. because it's it's again it's one of those things that are different than what we normally do so people are like oh what is this right um it's it's our, it's our traditional scone but it's rolled in all of these seeds like flax seeds and poppy oh, seeds and cool. sunflower seeds and then it has like a little dollop of like citrus icing on top and it's just an ex it's a scone, so it's still delightful and sweet, but it's got like all this nuttiness to it. There's a lot of breakfast items that we've gone through that mm -hmm. we don't make regularly. And I'm just like, these are the best in the world. We had a, a we had savory scones. We had a, a a cheddar and black pepper scone. That was a, it was so good. That sounds incredible. Oh, the texture was amazing. There's so much butter and it was so good. Yeah. Um, How could you go wrong? Right, exactly. So like, so like that sort of thing. It's like when, if we deviate a little bit too much from our normal thing, people won't try it and then it's like oh like we can't bring it back because like no one bought it so if you're at the bon bonnery and you see something new and different buy it so we know that you like it yeah so then we don't have conversations about like oh the coffee caramel creme brulee is delicious but no one bought it so no one likes it it's like right. no try it and know that I it is know, delicious i was gonna say i know someone's listening to this going like rubbing their hands together in a positive Ooh, way. Thinking about like, yeah, like, come on, Ooh. support the new stuff. And I'll be better about it too. So we'll team <laughs> well, up on We just fun. spent like all this time saying like, yeah, there's all this cool new stuff, but all I really want is a peanut butter cookie. <laughs> like, and, <laughs> and now we're telling everyone else, go buy the weird thing. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's that, uh, the, what is it? Uh, just the familiarity. Of course, you're, right. like you said, you know, you're not going to walk in every day and be like, all right, I'd like to start my morning with half of an opera cream tort. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, not, not maybe. on a Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, That's like clearly Thursday. A Thursday or Friday sort of <laughs> breakfast. That's um, awesome. Well, yeah. Kelly, I really appreciate your time today. I had a great time. Is there anything you'd like to make sure it gets out to the audience as we're near in holiday season? I know we talked about getting your orders in. Um, um, I would say, well, yes, getting your orders in, but... I mean, Christmas is always a really stressful time of year, but also I feel like this year in particular is a little bit more stressful as we hear on the news about all of these shortages happening. Yeah. Um, and I think people are a little bit more stressed, a lot a bit more stressed <laughs> out. So we are just, we want to thank people in advance for their, their patience and consideration. We're going to be really, really busy. Um, and we're, we're going to be going through people as fast as possible. And we, we have the best customers in the world and we're just really, really thankful that everyone is so kind and considerate and patient even during the holidays as things get crazy. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I, I'm glad too. Well, I'll make sure I get my orders in early. Thank you. Be polite, everybody. That's be really, nice to each other. Yeah, it's really Ooh. that's easy. It's it's literally part of the time of year. Be be nice to the people who are serving you at restaurants and coffee oh, yeah. shops and bakeries. Uh, one of my uh, favorite things that ever happened uh, yeah. was during Christmas, actually, a couple of years ago, and I was working with uh like with this woman named Erin at the counter, and she turned to me and she said, "This customer just gave me this thing," and I was like what? And she held up this tiny little, maybe like two by two inch wooden placard with a little painting of a snowman on it. And I was like, that is beautiful. She's like, yeah, he said he painted it himself. And I looked on the side and it had like W Hillenbrand on it. And I was like, oh, I was like, Will Hillenbrand? This is a Will Hillenbrand original. And she was like, what? And I was like, Will Hillenbrand is like a local uh, illustrator and author who does these beautiful paintings. Yeah. And he made all of, I guess he made a whole bunch of these little paintings to give to people through the holidays. And That's she got so one. Cute. And I was like, Aaron, hold on to this forever. Um, so like, if you are out there, Will Hillenbrand, thank you for your beautiful art. You made someone at the Bon Bonnery very happy. <laughs> that's so cool. And th that's the kind of, you know, I'm hoping that maybe in these little moments we can inspire people to do that kind of exactly. thing on a regular basis Kindness. for each other. Be like yeah. Will Hillenbrand. Right. <laughs> and like, uh, maybe minus the art skills. Don't hold me to that. So, yeah. but kindness, I'll meet. I'll kindness, match them all the way, Kindness, right? yes. 
That's so good. Well, I can't wait. Thanks again, Kelly. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll see you next quarter with a box of new treats. Sounds good. <laughs> <The> January <laughs> special. Exactly. <laughs> Whew, there is a lot of a lot of information in this episode, and I appreciate you all so much for listening and sticking through. And hey, one more reminder, we've got our huge Bourbon County Stout Party coming up on November 26th, famously known as Black Friday. So maybe you should come on by and see what we're getting into there. I am still very curious about the Bourbon County Stout Cola variant that we'll have in stock. And if you're listening to this right now, like, Mark, what are you talking about? Obviously, you're not a true fan of the show, but all kidding aside, if you listen back to last week's episode, episode eight, uh, you can hear our, one of our resident beer experts, Ferdinand, talking a little bit about that, uh, giving some great information on that. And while I'm thinking about it, we've also been talking for the last month or so on the show about the Sam Adams Utopias release. And I am super curious as to which one of you members of the brew crew got that because I, I feel like I deserve a sip, at least one. Uh, and I, if I, <laughs> this is crazy, but I think we had something like seven or 800 people sign up for the raffle to just be allowed to buy this bottle of beer, which is like $250. It's insane. I honestly, you know what? I love exclusive items. That's what the jungle does here. You know, it's like, you can't get that anywhere else in the world. Oh, you know what? I'll throw this a little briefly in here. And at some point I'll uncover this more deeply with someone who really knows. But there's like some fun finagling we did with Goose Island to get all of these special variants and to throw this huge party for them. So at one point, we had owned, we as in Jungle Gyms, I don't think I actually have any personal stake in this. Although if anybody wants to hook me up with what I'm about to talk about, please, I would drive it every day. But we owned an L car, like a train car from the L in Chicago, right? Uh, and, <laughs> and I'm not sure if we retrofitted it to be... Um, Custom and, and uh, road safe, what's the word I'm looking for? Street legal, that's the term. Um, but it, it's like a full-on vehicle, <laughs> no joke. Like it's a train car on wheels that drives places. And uh, Goose Island, the creators of the Bourbon County Stout, wanted that back. So we worked out some sort of, I'm going to call it jungle magic, so I don't you know spill too many beans here. But to get them the cart, and in turn, we get probably a certain amount of product we get. I'm sure some of these variants are semi-exclusive, at least to us. So I thought that was kind of cool. I will, um, I'll see if I can't find a good bit of documentation on the train car so you can see more about it, but just use your imagination. It's a train car with now street wheels and turn signals on it, which conveniently people in Chicago don't use. Sick burn. Okay, on that. Um, <laughs> I hope you all are having a great time. I hope you all have a great holiday. I know it's a, a week early technically for Thanksgiving stuff. I just wanted to make sure that you all had time to get all of your shopping in. You can come visit me. Maybe we'll do another what brings you in on the show. All that fun stuff where I pretend that I didn't set this up and edit it together for the sake of your consumption after the fact. Uh, next week we'll have some uh, I'm going to do some, some Black Friday focus stuff. So I think we'll talk a little bit again about the Bourbon County Stout Party. I'm trying to bring in uh, the manager of our toy department so we can talk about all kinds of fun stuff and some of those hot buys this year because you know what? Yeah, not only are we, are we an international market, we have literally one of the biggest toy stores in the area, if not all over, uh, that I get to stare at every day while I'm working and creating the show for you. This place is so cool. So come in and visit We'll have fun. It's going to be a great time. All right. Thank you again to everyone who's written those reviews. Thank you all so much for listening. I never want this to sound formula formulaic because I really do appreciate all of you. But it is something I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm getting the rhythm and say it at the end of every episode. But on that, I'm going to get to next week's episode. And in the meantime, I'll see you out there in the aisles. The Jungle Gyms podcast is recorded in the WJJI studio inside Jungle Gyms International Market in Fairfield, Ohio. The Jungle Gyms podcast is produced and hosted by Mark Borison.